All right, everyone, we are going to get uh, started here. Um, so let me get started. We want to thank you first for hopping on our monthly uh, webinar series. Um, and we're very excited with today's topic, which is defining a niche market and why it saves you marketing dollars. Um, right now, we um, would like to thank Center for Rural Affairs. Um, they are a statewide resource um, through Nebraska. And this is Nikki Chitwood, and they just have a quick video they wanted to share with you as um, we like to thank them for sponsoring um, our webinar series. Tanya, there's no sound. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I will just make sure to include this video in the follow-up email so you guys can watch it. I apologize that there's no sound, but I don't want to um, spend a lot of time trying to figure that out right now. So um, I'm going to just move here um, to the next couple of slides so Shannon um, can get started today. Um, so we'd like to thank our featured sponsor, uh, Nebraska Cooperative Development Center. Um, they um, have been a sponsor with us um, for, I think, a few years, and so we'd like to thank them, and they are a featured sponsor. Our featured member is Cracklin Kirk's Fireworks. It's July, so we, we definitely wanted to highlight them. They've been a member with us since 2019, um, and they're in the Donovan Trumbull area, but they do have... Um, really great fireworks displays. And this week's presenter is uh, Shannon Filing, um, and she is with Transformation Group, and I'll just let her take it away. Um, very excited for today's presentation. Well, hello, everyone. I am so excited. I love talking to people in business. It makes me, it fills my cup. Um, I didn't realize that I was an entrepreneur until my husband kind of told me, hey, I think we can do this. And then I fell in love with business. I fell in love with all of the parts of business. I'm not saying that I am perfect at them or they don't come without struggle. So let me preface that. I will be 100% honest with you. I like learning it. I like the value that, that business uh, brings to communities, to our lives and uh, to wealth building, that sort of thing. Um, so I'm excited that you guys are here as well. Uh, my first business was marketing. And guess what I'm still doing? Marketing. And I love it. I love the way that it can build business opportunities and things like that. So we are going to talk about a marketing topic of niche marketing, niche, niche, however you say it. Um, we're going to talk about that today. And so while I kind of give you a little intro, um, you can see in chat, please use chat. Feel free to come off mute if you have something to say. I am very casual with these because I feel the most um, that we take from something is when we participate. So please speak up. Please put in chat, what is your business? What is your industry? I'd love to see who we have here and um, what you guys are all doing. It's so exciting. And maybe even where you're from. That's always kind of fun too. So uh, with that said, we are going, I'm going to share screens. So give me a moment for all the technical stuff as we share this and we get started on niche marketing. Let's see. Present. This will be great to have on video as I try and tech my way into a perfect uh, presentation for you. All right. So everybody see my little niche over there, I hope so, with a thumbs up. Um, I kind of thought this was funny because I think the word's funny, to be quite honest. That tells you a little bit of my quirky humor. But it's like, what is a niche? When we talk about that in marketing and business, what's a niche and why is it important? I would say now, now, hey, Shannon, I, yes. Um, if you're sharing your screen, we're not, um, we are not seeing it right okay. now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Let's try it again. Oops. 
percent. Okay, I think I've got this here. Everyone see in my niche? Yes, we can see it now. Okay, back on track, awesome. If this isn't a lesson in business and marketing in particular, I don't know what is. We have to pivot, right? We have to get the data. The data was, I can't see. Um, so we have to address that. So that said, is what I was saying is that I think niche is so important now. And why would I say now and not even five, 10 years ago? Because we are marketed to relentlessly right? We have so many marketing messages coming at us, which is great. We have more access to things that could be helpful to us, but we have to weed through all of the things that aren't pertinent, aren't helpful to us. So that's why I say a niche is, is so important. So let's talk about what is a business niche when we want to apply that to our marketing? You know, officially it's a market segment where certain products and services are in demand. So basically, what does that mean? I would say, who is starving for your product or service? Who is starving for it? Who needs it desperately? Who can you impact the most? So much so that when they know about you and your product or how your process is to work with you, they would say, shut up, take my money. Shut up, take my money. Because they're starving for what you have to offer. Now, does that seem like, oh, I don't know. Who's starving for it? We need to identify that. And we're going to walk through how we can do that. But if I ask business owners, and I do when we talk about marketing, usually we'll say, what's your niche? What's your avatar? What's your um, ideal client? What's your target market, right? They can all be interchanged. So whatever terminology you're familiar with. But when I ask business owners, who is your target market? And they respond, everyone. What I hear is no one. Because if I am trying to blast a message in a sea of people, imagine that we are gonna be in Pinnacle Bank Arena, right? Or whatever big venue you're in. And I am there with 5,000, 10,000 people. And I'm like, I do marketing. No one's gonna hear that. No one's gonna hear it. But if I take my section or my row that I'm sitting in and I'm like, I do marketing and this is why you need me, they'll hear me, right? My niche was that row. So think about who needs to hear about us. Who is starving for our product? And their zeal in, in clients' zeal to get as many customers as possible, we think, okay, we're gonna cash, we're gonna cast a huge, huge net, and then I will get some reward. I will pull in the rewards if I cast a bigger net. And it seems a little counterintuitive to go, well, what if I cast a smaller net? What will benefit me? It seems a little counterintuitive. And we're gonna talk today a little bit why it is not. Um, by narrowing down target markets, business owners fear that they will be missing out on opportunities or potential customers. FOMO, that's a real thing when we think about niching. And I would just say, put that aside. We don't need to bring FOMO into this, fear of missing out. We will have plenty of people that will buy our products and services. So let's get into it. I want to the things. There we go. All right. So is there more money in a defined niche? That's my question to you. Sit with that a moment and go, if I niche down, is there more money? We have a big, big, huge opportunity if we market to everyone or we tell everyone or everyone can buy our product. But if I'm only talking to this, is there more money there? No. Guess what? There's easier money. There's easier money to be made there. And I'll tell you why. If we think that 90% of entrepreneurs, now this is a stat, I am not saying this is exactly accurate, but if 90% of entrepreneurs fail because they are either in the wrong niche or worse, they haven't identified a niche, what happens to us that we're like, we're gonna take the initiative and we're gonna niche. And I'm gonna tell you all the benefits that happen when we do niche. We can message highly targeted language, messages, marketing, we resonate. So let's dig in to that and why there's easier money in niche. And when easier money happens, our transactions increase more. 
So we will get more money. The piece of the pie might not be bigger, but our take of the pie will be higher. So here are why there's riches in the niches, right? I don't know if you've ever heard that. I should have looked up who coined it. I hear it all the time and it might be the industry that I'm in, but they say, oh, the riches are in the niches. It doesn't mean that your proportion of what people can buy will be higher. It means that you get more sales and who cares about the rest, right? So with riches are in the niches, we have smaller markets that attract fewer competitors, competitors, right? So if I'm sitting here and I'm like, I have to compete against 20 people that sell similar things that I sell or a service that I can perform it. What happens if I niche down and I only have to outbid or outperform or get the attention of one of three, right? Our competition goes down and therefore we have more visibility. So we can talk about this as now we're a big fish in a small pound. Who wants to be the big fish? We all do, right? We're going to be sharks. We're going to be on Shark Tank. So there's a reason why they name that. We don't want to be a small fish in a big pond. We'll get lost. It also, riches in the niches are we have more efficiency. Operating within a niche helps us gauge our effectiveness. In marketing, um, if you haven't figured this out already, there's going to be some waste in marketing because guess what? We're testing markets. We're testing mes uh, messages and we are um, testing how we are marketing, traditional, online, what ads. So there's going to be some waste. But when we have a niche, it takes a lot of those um, factors out and we can effectively move our marketing around because our data is going to be more clear. If our messaging isn't specific, isn't specific, it stunts our growth as a company. We have no idea why people are buying from us because we're trying to take a data pool that's so, so big as to why this person's buying, this person's buying, why this person isn't buying. But if we niche that down, we can hone in and be the experts. We get more profit and oftentimes higher fees. Like, wait, wait we can sell the exact same thing and if we niche down, we can actually charge more for the exact same thing? Yes, yes we can. Not that this is an exact parallel, but I wanna put it to you this way. If you had suffered a heart attack, would you prefer to be treated by a general practitioner or a heart specialist? Of course you'd choose the specialist. Now, in the broad sense of the term, they're both doctors, but one is highly specialized in what you need. So think about our businesses. How do we become highly specialized in what people need? And we can charge more. I'm going to fix you. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to provide that. And I can do it even at a higher fee. So get, are you getting excited yet? Let's hear in chat. I have Kara, who is an automotive technician wanting to start an automotive shop. I love that. And I'm going to come back to you, Kara, because I love that you said um, a nonprofit or co-op automotive shop. We have a small town bike shop in Beatrice. You're right down the road from me. Um, so that's really exciting. So we'll kind of start using those in some of these examples of how we can define niches. Number four, it allows us to target our message with clarity. So, um, Kara, we'll come back with you later, but I find it interesting, a nonprofit or co-op automotive shop. Right now, you're already starting to niche down in your message. So when it allows us to target our message with clarity, there might be a philanthropy interest in that, right? How do people plug in in different ways as opposed to, I just need to get my tire fixed, which I do. I had a nail in it yesterday. So we think about that going, how do we keep niching down? It also allows you to build expertise. This happens a lot in a uh, marketing agency space as well. So you will see big, big agencies. Um, I am not a big agency. So I, I kind of chose my path a little bit different and I niched based off of size of client because I knew their needs and I can identify with them. Big agencies, they might say, hey, I um, market with green focused companies. 
Um, there is an agency in my um, in my area. They're not competitions because we don't serve the same people, but um, they will look for high profile brands. They might do like Toro or things like that, right? So they're going to niche into a market. And why do they do that? It's because they they spend an immense amount of time educating themselves on what that industry needs. What are their pain points? What is the shakeup in that industry? They will attend uh, trade shows. I mean, I don't know if they still do because that's kind of changed since COVID, but when they attend trade shows, they know very specifically the spaces that they need to be in. They know the problems that they're solving and they can speak the same language. When we understand exactly what they are looking for, their pain points, and we actually speak the same languages, it's like, oh, okay, these are my people. I get it. They get me. They get me. And it resonates so much better. Um, when we talk about like the nonprofit space, we have sales and they have donors. Essentially what's happening is money is supporting the organization, be it profit or nonprofit. They are essentially the same thing, but they use donors. If I do a seminar that's specifically for nonprofit, I try very hard to remove my language saying sales and inject by language of donors, because the more you speak their language, the more they feel understood and your message doesn't get lost with a disconnect. And it also allows you to spend less on money, on marketing, right? Less money on marketing. Yay, who's in with this for save, savings? Saving, saving, savings, that is so great. So right now at the ready, and I won't spend a lot of time on this, but with digital marketing in particular, we can build our audience first, with AI ads, if you ever have questions, you can reach out to me, I help you with this, and then deliver your message to them. So if we know our niche, if we know our market, now we get a message that resonates and we deliver it directly to that market. We are not spraying and praying, if you will. We are not broadcasting a message across an entire region or an entire audience space in hopes that a section of that has the need for my product and that will buy. So we wanna spend less on marketing so we can be highly efficient with the response that we have to our marketing need, our money we spend, and how we serve our clients. I'm hoping, we'll see if you guys get sound. I do have a video here. Um, let's see if you guys get sound. Let me know if you don't. And that's where niching down and being very specific about the avatar becomes important, especially when you're starting because then you can productize the service because if you're doing everything custom, which most people when they're starting out do, it becomes really difficult to become efficient. And right. it's really difficult to become efficient, you have very little margin, right? Or you have to charge huge fees, which most people are too afraid to do. And so the flip side is if I do the same thing over and over and over again, I will get better and more efficient at it. And I will know how to do it faster and quicker and cheaper. And I specifically choose this type of customer so that I can have more margin because there are millions of even this one specific type of avatar. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I can take the gross margin, the extra cash that I have, and I can hire the best people. I can invest in marketing. If you are not familiar with um, Alex Hermosi, I really do like him. I have a few people that I really, really like. So I just give you a resource. Um, he came out first, let's see, with this $100 million offers. And then he followed it up with $100 million leads. Um, fascinating books. He also has a lot of free resources. So if you want to kind of jot that down as someone to check out, he's got a ton of YouTube stuff. Um, I pulled one from his, but um, his story is fascinating. Don't have time here to tell you, but it might be of interest to you guys because he's been highly successful, but that is not a result of an easy road. He talks about how he learned and why he shares with us now what he's learned. So uh, fascinating guy, if you want to look him up. So what do we have when we look at niching down? We might have two common worries. One being fear of not picking the right niche, the right thing. What if I pick wrong? I'm gonna tell you straight up, most likely you aren't gonna pick the right thing to start. So just, just don't even bring that along for the ride, right? Don't bring that fret along. Just say, I need to start somewhere. And within that, I will learn and I can refine. Right. And that's OK. So what's interesting to me, and I'm going to share a short little story. One of the businesses that I own is called The Cabin. It's a private virtual golf club. So members can go in there. It's unmanned. They have key code access. They can go in. They can golf. 
all of these um, particular uh, golf courses. I'm not a golfer, but I thought when we opened it, people would join because they want year-round golf. While some do, that's true. What I found actually was not just the avid golfer, and quite honestly, two more niches appeared. One was the business golfer because they can bring their uh, clients and prospects with them and they don't have to reorganize calendars if they have a rain out. So it's highly efficient. Um, so some people came because of the efficiency and I found that that was very highly coveted in the financial uh, planner or finance and uh, insurance industries because they could have private conversations. So there became a niche, one that I did not uncover at the beginning of starting the cabin. So it, I, it was discovered over time. So having your eyes and ears open and having conversations with those that buy and those that don't buy. What was misaligned that allowed, you know, that made the decision not to join? Can you tell me what wasn't a fit? So now I don't have to market to people that have that same drawback. So have the conversations and spend the time doing there, doing that with them. The other thing that I noticed is um, it was the efficiency and it was the privacy. Um, and then what's materializing too with that is that I have people that want to learn golf or their spouse wants to learn golf, but they're intimidated to do it on the golf course. And so they can do this in the privacy of um, the cabin. So it's quite interesting. So like I said, is you will discover niches as you go and you don't have to only have one forever and ever. I'm just saying, get good at one before you build on more. <clears throat> so we think about that going, okay, so if we don't pick the right thing, what if we have the worry or fear of excluding people or other opportunities? What if that is something that we're holding on to? Think about the things that you use on the daily that weren't for the original use. So I'll give you an easy example. How many of you might have tied something down with an old shoelace? Okay, that's not what the niche was. That's not the use or intention of a shoestring, but we found a use for it. It doesn't mean that other people are not gonna buy. It means we are not gonna spend marketing dollars targeting them. So don't worry about excluding people or opportunity. They will come to you and you will identify new opportunities when the time is right before you spend the money on them. So uh, don't be afraid. Don't hold these common worries about excluding opportunity for your company. So let's do a little exercise here on what does a broad target look like versus a niche target? So I put some very simple ones here and we're gonna just keep building them down. So a broad market might be, I target business owners. I have a B2B product or service. So if you said, hey, Shannon, who do you target? Oh, business owners. Okay, there could be far fewer things that are more vague than that. But say I, um, my target is retail business owners with five or more years experience. I thought about this scenario that maybe if I am a commercial property uh, broker, and I have realized in time that I have excellent retail space. They grow quicker. And at the five-year mark, they're tired of leasing and they're ready to buy or upsize, right? So instead of saying, oh, I, I work with business owners because I lease out commercial real estate. Now, when you tell me that, I'm like, oh, you should know this retail business owner because they're probably about at the time that they're going to upsize, right? Because I've defined it. I've niched down more that retail businesses are great uh, with five or more years experience. What if I do coaching and I said, oh, you know, my target is business women. Okay, well, business women do a lot. So what does that say? I, I don't know what you're coaching them to do. But what if my expertise is female executives looking for new advancement opportunities because I'm really good at building resumes and practicing interviews and finding strengths and selling yourself. Now that's a lot more clear. So now I'm not just targeting business women. I am looking for people that are ready to make a new career change, advancement, or shift. So our messages can align with that. Are you seeing the value of niching? Let's try this once more. We have a broad market is I, I have a product that's great for the pet market. 
Okay, well, what does that mean exactly? Well, maybe I sell pet cameras that watch or interact with your pets while you're not home, GPS pet trackers, personalized products with pet photos, organic pet foods and treats, pet accessories, boarding, grooming, training. All of that goes under the pet market flag and probably a multitude of others. And even you can say, okay, well, do you accommodate dogs or cats or exotic pets? We have to niche because if I own an exotic bird and you're telling me that you do obedience training, you've just wasted marketing dollars on me in a message that doesn't resonate because I can't buy it from you. Say we're in the real estate market. What is under the real estate market flag? Home security, uh, furniture and home decor, uh, renovations, home solutions. Um, this one very specific, maybe no drill blinds, first time home buyers, downsizers or empty nesters, that is a niche. Um, executive or temp living spaces. If you have big um, corporations in your market that might be moving people in temporarily for a three month stint and out, they might buy a space from you specifically for that purpose. So what happens when we niche? It becomes so much clear. We aren't vague, we get more referrals. We know who we're looking for and we can define the spaces that we spend our time. So let's um, break this down. If we look at it as a funnel, we're gonna start with a very broad market and we are gonna define, 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 define. And when we get leads, referrals, opportunities, we're gonna throw them in our funnel and go, you qualify, you qualify, you qualify, you buy. Think of it as a funnel for money. So put, it, put this in here for marketing services. Okay, I sell marketing services. I sell online and digital ads. I sell content development. I sell social media management. I sell marketing services. But who do I sell it to? These are, this is the process that I want you to start going through. What do you sell? And you may pick one thing. You might sell many, but if we're gonna talk about marketing, let's refine one product that they're starving for. And we'll do this process with that one product. And you could do it over and over and over again with different products, right? So we have marketing services and who do I sell that to? Small businesses, that's my niche. A team of five to 50, typically over 50, it's not a great fit. They'll have internal uh, departments. They have different needs. I like to work with owners still in the business because they see the value because they're time impoverished and I can save that for them. I know that's a pain point they have. I know because I've experienced it. So I'm looking for owners that are still working in the business, not investors that are out of the business. I like businesses that have been in business five to 15 years. They've seen enough change. We can talk about history and in five years, they're ready to scale. They probably scaled a little bit, but they've got their feet under them as entrepreneurs and business owners that they know what they need to do. Now they're looking for partners to do it. So that's what I look for. Product or service has a longer sales cycle. Uh, this is a new one for me because I have a software development that came into play this year. So I look at nurturing leads beyond just the ads. So I like those longer sales cycles because I can minimize that for them. They already know they have a longer sales, sales cycle. And with my product, I can lessen that. So my value is clear earlier. Maybe the service has to be knowledge-based because I have a course generator, right? So think about the whys and who buys. Now I'm, I'm knowing who I'm talking to in that big crowded room. Who do I need to see? And I like to have the product simplify something in their life and in their business. Are they using several tools and subscriptions, trying to juggle them, trying to integrate them, trying to have them speak to one another, and they're having to set up over here and set up in this tool and set up in this tool, and it's taking time that I know that they do not have. Because remember, I'm looking for someone who is still working in the business. And they have to drive sales. And so they know that they need automation. And in particular, I'm like, okay, what industries do I like working with? Maybe I'm going to say, I really like bringing this to the pet industry because number one, it's easy to market cute pet pictures. Maybe I like the trades industry because I know they're in the field. So they aren't going to market until evening and then they don't do it because they're tired. And if it's knowledge-based, I'm going to look for coaches and consultants. 
So now I've looked at this going, okay, I can take what I can do, even though it can help more people, but I'm gonna define the why they're gonna buy and I'm gonna define the who and I'm gonna define the process and what I'm gonna save them, which helps me create a value packed message when I market. So let's put this into practice. That's why I asked who is, um, who's doing what here? So this is interesting, Christine. You have a localized cryotherapy and holistic wellness services like the cold plunge compression therapy. I love that. Okay, so this is relatively new in these parts to my um, on my radar, but it's it's talked about a lot more. So Christine, um, let if you would, could you come off mute? Let's do this process with you with niching down. You already created what your services were. Are you willing to walk through this with us as an example? You might be on mute. <laughs> can you hear me? I can. Welcome, welcome. So, Thank Christine, you. do you mind participating with us live? I'm sure. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So let's do this process with you. So you have cryotherapy and holistic wellness. My question to you is cryotherapy, a component of holistic wellness, and you have other services. Should we focus on the cryotherapy in particular? Uh, yes. Let's focus on the, the cryotherapy. Um, that awesome. is our main um, service here. We use it for several different things, including our, our biggest thing is for um, fat freezing. So we can help people lose inches, um, but we can also do uh, like facials with our cryotherapy. And we also use it for pain management. So wow. lots of different things that we can do with this one thing, but we also have several others, like I said, with the cold plunge, we have a sauna, compression therapy, oxygen therapy. Um, so yeah, lots of different modalities. Amazing. Okay. So the three things you mentioned about cryotherapy um, and self-admitting, I didn't know a lot about it. The only market I've heard that tied to was um, athletes. Yes. Um, so interesting, right? That you just unleashed three more reasons to um, intrigue me on cryotherapy, right? So let's talk about that cryotherapy. You um, have cryotherapy and then one of your niche could be women, right? Yes. Fat freezing, that spoke to me. Um, <laughs> Facial spoke to me. Um, so you you think about that stuff going, okay, so we have cryotherapy where we specialize in women feeling their best. Maybe we talk about, I don't even know. I'm going to throw these things out there as idea generators. Um, postpartum women um, trying to lose inches after a baby, maybe. Yes. Um, Maybe someone who's experienced a lot of weight loss, but now they need to lose and tighten up some inches to go along with the scale, perhaps. I don't know. But think about those things. Um, if you were to pick a room and fill it with someone who would be starving to buy your product, what would those people look like in that room? So typically for me, what, what I think of my kind of perfect avatar, if you would, um, again, like say those postpartum moms, um, typically they're going to be between 35 to 55 years old um, because they're going to be done having the, those kids at that time that have that, you know, stomach pooch that they're trying to get rid of. Um, that's our number one um, for our clients that way. That's amazing. So this isn't new to you. You had already identified that, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I could see also a niche being uh, professional women. Um, wanting Again, I, I worked with a product that they were looking for professional women that 
they had to have an emotional tie to feeling youthful and relevant in a space that they worked that a lot of younger um, people were coming into. They kind of felt like, hey, if I feel youthful, I feel um, all of those things, I will emotionally be able to participate better. So that's kind of interesting too, um, is tying that into the professional woman that has to make sales presentations and all of those things. So um, so you're getting behind the why to buy. So if I were to say, hey, Christine, let's market your product and I have the ability online to identify your audience. Now I can cut out women 18 to 35, right? I don't have to spend mm -hmm. advertising dollars on that because they aren't ready. They aren't, the, the message isn't going to resonate, right? Or um, 65 plus, I'm not saying somebody might not like your product or, or join up, but we don't have to spend marketing dollars on Right. The images that we select, we want to make sure that they represent the people in that um, age range, since that's one of our identifiers. So all of these things make the message connect with the buyer. That's exciting. Um, you could talk about perhaps, uh, do you have like three easy steps or three easy treatments or um, those sorts of things you might bring in? I know you're a busy mom of however many, um, we make this super easy because we have after our uh, office hours or whatever it may be, there might be another layer that you could add is how easy do we make it so you can buy my product? Okay, yep. Awesome, where are you located? Uh, McCook, Nebraska. Oh. Yeah, 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 awesome, awesome. Right to the west of me. Well, exciting. How long have you been in business? Um, just one year. Okay. That's exciting. That first year is kind of a challenge. You learn a lot. So kudos for being here. Thank you. All right. So Eric, you have big blue bike company. Um, I'm very familiar with Beatrice, just about a half an hour from you. Eric, do you want to get off mute and let us know about your company and if you've niched down yet or what your thoughts are about niching your company? <clears throat> Hi, Eric. Can you hear us? Looks like he might be off mute. So, can you hear me now? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Hi. Um. Yeah. So I just opened uh, last October. Uh, so coming up on a year here, um, just Real kind quick. of, um, just saw the need <clears throat> that this, a town this size and this far from Lincoln needed a, a bike shop. Um, so I really didn't even know a whole lot about the bike industry. So I'm still kind of learning everything, but, uh, it's going pretty well so far. Good, good. Congratulations. Now, did you were you an entrepreneur before? Is this your first step into that arena? This is my first step into it. I always wanted to do it. I just never knew which avenue to take to do it. So nice. Oh, very good. Well, congratulations. That's super exciting. Yeah. So um tell me about you're probably still getting your bearings about you um, being less than a year, but have you thought about niching your company in way of how you contribute your time towards the business growth, your marketing and things like that? Have you niched? Um, well, up until about yesterday, I have been completely busy doing this day-to-day um, -day, uh, functions of the business that being mainly I've been busy with service on bikes and stuff but up until yeah I finally got a chance to breathe here and that's why I'm on this webinar today that uh, can focus on some of my marketing stuff and website and stuff oh um, congratulations so what was the shift from yesterday did you hire someone yesterday no I've had employees but even with the I well I hired I started hiring in February and then, so I have three employees part-time that are okay. their high school, high school kids that help me out, just keep, help keep me caught up. Um, 
but otherwise I'm still, you know, since I'm still trying to run everything myself at this point, but eventually I would like to get to the point where I could do a little bit more of the management and a little bit less of the day to day. Very nice. Well, let's get you there with um, some cash flow with niching down. Uh, so I'm going to ask niches that come to mind um, with Viking companies that I've looked for. Um, it could be the hardcore um, athlete biker that uses them for um, races and such. Uh, mountain biking. We have e-bikes and electric bikes right now. We have kids' bikes. We have repair service. Um, are there any of those niches that you really want to own or interest you? Um, the ones I'm most interested in is the kids' bikes, uh, the e-bikes, and more of the recreational like family uh, because we have a really nice trail system here. I'm really not wanting to go after that um, higher end um, race, you know, that market, okay. because that market can go to Lincoln. I would rather them go to a more experienced shop in that, that um, realm for that. So what I hear is hobby bikers and um, uh, so hobbyists, basically. Like yes. Yeah, and just your typical family, because just like what I am right now, I have two young kids that need bikes, and and so. Nice. Very good. Okay, so if we were to do this exercise with you, um, Eric, if you yeah. were to pick a niche and you wanted to fill this room with them, what is going to be the easiest sale for you? Um as far as a certain type of customer yeah because that's going to start working on your niche um the anybody probably 50 and 50 to 70 looking for like the any e bike or just a new bike okay um, all right so you um have a niche of 50 to 70, yeah. uh, we could say maybe empty nesters that have time to yep. bring on a hobby or rejuvenate a hobby, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, interest in e-bikes. So we could talk about the niche also being um, at that at that age because I'm entering that age and have had some friends with knee replacement surgeries already due to sports yep. and stuff, but this would be a way to bring back a hobby, um, even post knee replacement, you know, yep. with the bikes, right? Yep. So yep. think about those messages as the why behind the buy. Um, in what you'll see, like in this particular case with the big blue bike company is we're already overcoming objections. Ah, I can't ride a bike. I just had a knee replacement. Really? Well, I got e-bikes. I got e-bikes making it super easy. Um, uh, mm -hmm those sorts of things, or I'm not a biker. I'm just not really physically fit. I'm worried about that. Okay. Well, an e-bike allows you to pedal or have the power of an e-bike for your heels. So you don't have to uh, worry about not going as far or catching up, right. keeping up with other people. Right. So we're right. also, when we're defining that, we're also overcoming objections, making the sales easier. Yep. Yeah. And I also have electric tricycles because uh, for the same regards and some of the, the older, even up to maybe 80 years old that they're in their seventies and they still want to get out and do it, but they can't balance as well. Anymore. Balance. Oh, heavens. Yes. Uh, my in-laws are pushing 80 and they decided that they were going to get motorcycles. I don't know what happened. They rode them around for a while and then said, nope, our balance is yeah. Yeah. yeah, probably not. Then they tried to get them and so we're, we're trying to bring them back into the sense of reality. Right, yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, so this exercise, um, Eric, hopefully you can take that and define even one or two core, niche, core yeah. niches. And so your messages will align. You can overcome right. objections before there are objections. Right. So. Kara, we had, um, I had mentioned you a little bit. I'm a little bit intrigued here. Um, and automotive technician 
Tell me about your business with um, the tie to nonprofit or co-op automotive shop. What's your, what's your vision there? So I'm still in the planning phases. I don't actually have anything up and running yet. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I have always been big in social services uh, and realized, um, and I've also been a gearhead. I've did my first oil change when I was nine years old. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so I've just, I've come to realize after working in the automotive industry for about two to three years now, I'm a stay at home mom. I'm just entering the work field. I mean, I've had like, you know, retail in the past when I was way, way younger, but okay. Um, my oldest just turned 18. So I uh, went back to school to get my automotive technician certificate at uh, Metropolitan back in 2022. Awesome. And being a woman in this field has left me jaded, to be honest. I am tired of my female friends. Well, one, I'm tired of being taken advantage of. I went to go get um, my uh, truck looked at and it came out with an $1,800 estimate for um, wheel bearings, which is literally a, I mean, both wheel bearings is a four hour job. And they were saying it was gonna take two days and that I'd have to replace the steering knuckle and all this other stuff. And I'm like, so I, I, I originally, I wanted to start it as a social company, but those aren't even like for tax purposes, they're not even allowed in the US yet. Oh, so what I, started, I hear you. I don't think I heard you right. A what company? It's called a social company. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. And what it is, is it's a for-profit company, but the profit gets reinfused back into the company. Okay. Um, it's huge in India. Um, but then I, as I started looking into <clears throat> the different business structures and things like that. It's just, it's not, there's no, there's no precedence for it here yet. The, the closest thing though, then that comes to that then is a cooperative. Okay. And I actually just thought about that. Like literally as I was filling out my, my thing yeah. was the, the co-op, like it just dawned on me today that that's, that's as close to the social aspect as I can get. Okay. Um, I've been a welfare mom. <clears throat> my in my you know my check engine lights on my car right now I don't have access to an automotive shop to be able to go fix it um and so it's uh yeah so it's in the automotive industry is not not even like car sales I'm talking about just repair and maintenance is a 14 billion dollar industry yeah well just that small niche that I'm trying to get into. I love that you are seeing the value of uh, niching. And um, what's interesting about that is there's one female owned shop in Lincoln that I'm aware of. Um, what's interesting about that, that in and of itself could be a really super healthy niche, right? Like that. Wait, I you know not... of a female owned sh like automotive shop in Lincoln? There's one. Yes. Um, that's it's over at 84th and um, 84th and O. I'm trying to, I'm not Because <clears throat> I'm up in Omaha and there's nothing like that here. Okay. There's one in, um, <clears throat> Excuse in me. Lincoln. Um, enough so that I recall that it is female owned, that they market it, um, not exclusively that way, but enough that that's hit my radar. So um, that said, it, that in and of itself could be a very healthy niche because guess what? Women refer really easily. I had a great yeah. experience and I will tell everyone about it, right? We do that. And so female niches make it so much easier because they will be your advocate and um, tell lots of people for you. So that in and of itself could be, I um, look for female car owners responsible for making their own um, auto repair decisions. I will not speak industry lingo and making sure you make educated decisions. Um, you know, those sorts of things. Think about the value that you bring and bring that into your niche. Yeah. And before we run out of time a little bit and we can come back as Adam. Hi, Adam, friend. I love that you're on here. I didn't know you're going to be on here. So um, 
Adam asks, and this is pertinent to everybody here too, is when niching down, would you suggest, suggest choosing a niche you want to target or that you see coming to you the most? Well, how I would answer that, Adam, since the question actually was to me, wink, wink, is that when you start, when we're in the position that Kara is in, is I would niche by what you want. What is What seems natural to you? right? I told you for me, small business seemed natural because I could identify with them. I know because I've walked in their shoes. I can speak their same language. I can do all of those things. So it's very natural. So I targeted with what I wanted and what I knew. I told you I am not a golfer, right? But we opened up this golf cabin. My husband is a golfer. So we opened that up, but what I learned through it is what came in. What did they say? And that allowed me to open up other niches. It wasn't just the avid golfer. I could open up other niches in time in my marketing, and I could have better conversations once I learned more. So my two-part answer to you, Adam, and to everybody here is do what seems comfortable to you. Why would you buy? Why would you buy? Why did you open the business? What made you open up the bike shop? What would prompt you to buy? Is it because you have family time? Is it because you like the new advancement in the e-bike? If so, it will be very natural for you to sell in that. You will know the whys that other people will buy as well. But please do not close off your ears for other niches that will show themselves in time because you will have to bring them in or pivot. If what you wanted and what you desired at first isn't quite resonating, you will learn through that process so you can open up a more defined niche with better marketing and messaging. Adam, does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Um, Kara, I want to give you super big kudos for thinking through this. You knew the need that you had. You knew the experience you want others to avoid because you did not enjoy it. That in and of itself is going to help motivate you to be able to connect with others. I can tell you right now, you are not the only one that has experienced this. I thought about that early in my twenties. I had to um, paint my car and I had never had a more condescending sales encounter <laughs> at that particular point. And we all want to be valued. Even if I don't know what I don't know, I still want to be valued to be uh, the client that I was trying to be. Right. So think about how you can resonate and when they see that you're very authentic about what you bring to the table, they will gravitate towards you. So I'm very excited to see what you do, Kara. Um, we have a few minutes left. Does anyone else have questions or want to go through their niche? Or um, do you have a worry that we need to overcome about niching? Well, if someone wants to speak up, we do have a few minutes. Um, that said, I will give you a QR code to a lovely feedback form. Would love to hear from you. And furthermore, um, Transformation Group, you can see us at tmresults.com. I can put it here in the chat as well. If you have questions for me that you want to ask offline, um, I am more than willing to take your call. I'm also going to put my phone number in here. Um, you can call me or text me. I love to be of help to people um, because like I said, um, business really energizes me. I see what it brings to the value of the business owner's life, their staff and their communities. So, Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Shannon. It was a really great learning today. I definitely took a lot of notes myself. That's the way I can just continue to share that knowledge you shared with us today. Um, I'm going to start wrapping us up, but once again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to um, put them in the chat. Um, and then I'll also make sure to include your email in the follow-up email, Shannon, just where they can reach out to you um, if they do have any questions. So um, I'm going to share my screen here. And so thank you once again, Shannon, for presenting. Um, we do have some upcoming trainings. Um, we have one next Thursday at... Um, for you if you wanted to press that and just kind of see what upcoming trainings we have. This other link I'll touch on in just a second. 
Um, you can also scan this QR code here um, if you'd like um, to just use your phone to check it out. And then um, we have on March 25th and 26th of 2025, um, our Market Tech Conference. Uh, we have our keynote speaker, Chelsea, and she is um, a social media marketer. She does a lot with video and Instagram. And so we're very excited to have her come out and um, just share um, those fun tips and tricks that you can take back to your business. So we ask that you mark your calendars and save the date. Registration should be opening up in August. And so I just wa would watch out for that. And so you can get registered. And then Grow Nebraska recently launched open office hours. And so you can scan this to sign up or it's at grownebraska.org backslash um, open office hours. And then we um, ask if you are not following us on social media to give us a follow. Um, we're on a lot of different social media, but we do post um, a lot of content um, about Nebraska businesses and their products, services, um, any great um, things that are happening in the great state of Nebraska. And then we ask um, if you would be able to just leave us a two to three sentence Google review, letting us know what your thoughts were on the training. I sent that review link here in the chat so you can either scan the QR code or um, use that link there. And that will just take you directly to the profile. Um, fun tip, um, if you ever do ask for a Google review, you're gonna wanna ask for two to three sentences just so that it counts towards your reviews because um, you need 65 star reviews for to stay on page one. And so um, that just a little tip I learned <laughs> from our Google Google guide. So um, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to um, contact me. My name is Tanya. Um, you can call the store number or you can email me at Tanya at Grow Nebraska. And I'm happy to um, chat with you. Um, if you have any suggestions on topics as well, please feel free to reach out. But um, I hope that everyone has a good rest of their day. And we, oh, it looks like, um, Shannon, it looks like Eric actually asked a question here. Um, what is the best method to choose the right digital marketing to reach your niche market? Yeah, um, so... That's very interesting and very good question is when you define your niche, your target market, then that will help identify the digital property in which you use. Um, we can do AI ads, which is great um, because we can identify the audience. If your market, which social media is really awesome for that, but which social media platform, Facebook tends to be the most um, broad sourced, if you will. There's a lot of ages on there. Um, and I could see Instagram being a really good fit for you um, as well with the uh, family uh, market that you had discussed. So uh, Facebook, Instagram, and if you want to broaden that into AI ads in time, um, that would be good too. But I think you could really move the needle a lot with your social media, those two platforms. And what's really nice about that is your ad dollars, if should you choose to spend ad dollars, will also benefit both Facebook and Instagram because they're really one entity, two platforms. So there's some efficiency in there too. So if you ever have some more specific questions on that, but I think that would be a really good place to start, especially knowing your community, um, you can really target that area without having to spend a whole lot of money in a bigger space that they won't travel to buy from you. So I would start with that. Well, yes, thank you so much, Shannon, for asking. Um, letting us allow last minute questions. And so thank you, Eric, for asking the question. Um, but I will let everyone go for the day and I hope everyone has a good, um, happy Thursday. Hi everyone, thanks for being here.